Kids. And I'm. <laughs> and we're two, two kids, kids on a couch. couch. Hello and welcome back to Two Kids on a Couch, where we decided it would be a good idea to put the five most nominated shows of the season into one episode. Hold on to your hats, folks. It's time for the nominees for Best Original Musical. And Juliet invites us into a world in which Anne Hathaway, not that one, has rewritten her husband William Shakespeare's tragic love story with a feminist twist. In this version, Juliet does not kill herself after she finds Romeo's dead. Instead, she stands up, leaves, finds a new life, finds a new love, and does so all to the backing of pop songs by Max Martin, who has an incredibly large catalog. I had no idea this man had written so many pop songs that are so famous. I, did other people know this? Now, it's no secret that here on this channel we don't care for jukebox musicals, but if you haven't heard me say it before, I'll say it again. I so strongly prefer jukebox musicals that have an original plot and tell a new story as opposed to these freaking biopics. As such, I think this is a really fun show. I like the music more than I like the original versions most of the time. I think the cast is strong. I think the design is pretty neat. And all in all, I think it's a good time. And I guess so to the nominators. It was nominated for nine Tony Awards. Best Musical, Best Book of a Musical, Best Performance by an Actress in a Leading Role in a Musical for Lorna Courtney, Best Performance by an Actress in a Featured Role in a Musical for Betsy Wolf, Best Costume Design of a Musical for Pamela Young, Best Lighting Design of a Musical for Howard Hudson, Best Sound Design of a Musical for Gareth Owen, Best Choreography by Jennifer Weber, and Best Orchestrations by Bill Sherman and Dominic Falacaro. We can start with the acting categories. I think it's kind of fun that just the women were nominated, like, Feminism and yay. When the show opened in London in 2020, it won Olivier Awards for Best Leading Actress, Featured Actress, and Featured Actor. And yet none of that cast transferred. It's an all new cast, which is kind of weird. But I think it's neat that both Lorna and Betsy were nominated. I don't know that either of them will win. I think Betsy probably has a slightly better chance than Lorna, but there's a lot of good work being done on Broadway this year by women. And so I don't think either of them are my favorites, but fun that they're nominated. They give good performances. I love it. As for the design categories, I thought the design of the show was really neat. I really like the costumes. Like, I know it's not really anything different from, like, what Will Shakespeare wore in Something Rotten, but I thought that costume was cool. I am into hip, leather, and studded Shakespearean clothes. I, I, I wish it would win Best Costumes. I don't know if it will, but I'd say it's probably my pick for it. Lighting and sound, very neat, very cool, very concerty. Don't know that they'll necessarily win. I think you heard me say the other day that I thought Sweeney Todd was going to win, so I suppose I should stick with that. But I thought the design was very good. I hope it wins Best Costumes, and if it wins the others, I wouldn't be disappointed. I don't know if it'll win Best Orchestrations. What do I look like, an orchestrator? I'll say, I'll say no. No, we'll, we'll go with no. I also really like Jennifer Weber's choreography. Every time I've seen this show on a talk show or something, do a little performance, I'm really impressed by the dancing. I think it's fun and energetic and hard and good. So I think it'd be neat if it won Best Choreography. I, I don't know that it will. There's a couple of other nominees that are also pretty strong here. Um, but I think if it was like, if it was the kind of show that was gonna sweep everything, you could throw choreography in and it would totally work. Because it's not quite the case, I don't know that it'll win, but I like it a lot. It also has a really good book, but this is a season of really good books. This, this might be the first season in a while where I feel like all the books, most of the books are stronger than most of the scores, which I like. But despite the fact that this book is very good, I don't think it's gonna win. And it will not win Best Musical, which is fine. This is not a show that was designed to win Best Musical. This is a fun show. I'm glad it's on Broadway, and I don't say that about a lot of Jewish box musicals. I hope it has a strong life after. I think this will be fun for high schools and, and other community theater groups to do. It has kind of head over heels energy, which I like as well. I think it's a good show. Glad it's running. Glad it was nominated for so much. Hope it continues to have an average life on Broadway, and then makes room for something else. But, uh, and Julia. <laughs> Next up, we're going to talk about Some Like It Hot. This show has the most nominations of any production this season with 13 Tony nominations. Some Like It Hot is the first musical comedy to open this season. It tells the story of two jazz musicians in Chicago in the 1920s, 30s-ish who witness a mob hit and so have to go into hiding. They both dress as women, join an all-female jazz troupe, and travel across the country. Shenanigans, hijinks, and hilarity ensue. 
It is a beautiful story about gender identity and expression and finding a partner who loves and supports you on your journey, both romantically, platonically, relationally. Some Like It Hot has the most nominations of any show this Tony season with 13 Tonys on the board. Let's talk about them. <laughs> Some Like It Hot was nominated for Best Orchestrations by Charlie Rosen and Brian Carter, Best Lighting Design of a Musical for Natasha Katz, Best Scenic Design of a Musical for Scott Pask, Best Costume Design of a Musical for Greg Barnes. Best Performance by an Actress in a Featured Role in a Musical for Natasha Yvette Williams. Best Performance by an Actor in a Featured Role in a Musical for Kevin De Aguila. Best Performance by an Actor in a Leading Role in a Musical for both Christian Borrell and J. Harrison G. Best Book of a Musical for Matthew Lopez and Amber Ruffin. Best Original Score for Mark Shaman and Scott Whitman. Best Direction of a Musical and Best Choreography for Casey Nicola. And Best Original Musical. I hope that's 13. Some Like It Hot is, I think, the favorite to win most things this year. It is a fun show, it has a reason to exist, it tells a good story, it tells it really well, the writing is super sharp, uh, the music is by the team who wrote Hairspray, so like, they really know how to make a, a crowd-pleasing, effective Broadway musical. In terms of what it will win, Generally speaking, if a show wins Best Musical, it's going to win most other things, and I think Some Like It Hot will win Best Musical. That being said, I'd love to see other shows be represented in what wins. Uh, who knows if that'll happen? So we're going to do this one by one. In terms of Best Orchestrations, I don't know. Probably. They're good. The band's on stage. That's fun. Kind of the same thing with lighting and scenic design. Um, I would rather see New York, New York take home scenic and lighting. I, I'm really, I'm bad. I'm bad at guessing lighting. By default, sure. Nata this is not Natasha Katz's only nomination this Tony season. So the odds of her winning a Tony specifically are pretty high. Whether it's for this one or another show, who's to say? The same can be said of Scott Pass, who also has more than one dog in this race. Dog in this fight? I think the acting awards are where this is going to get a little bit messier. I think J. Harris and G should win, and I think they are the favorite to win. That being said, everyone loves Christian Borle. Christian Borle does great work, but the show is, it's, it, it's telling J. Harrison's story. Um, and I think they should, I think they should win. In terms of best featured actress, Natasha Yvette Williams acts as not like a narrator, but like a, a bonding unit. She is the kind of the, the matron of this all-female jazz band, like the, the conductor, uh, the warden feels like a wrong word. So yeah, I think Natasha Yvette Williams does phenomenal work. Her energy is insane. Like what she does, first of all, vocally, bananas. Um, and just kind of the, the role she plays in the show is vital. That being said, it's not like a, I hate to say this, it's not like a Tony winning role, but she's great. In terms of the content awards, the book and the score, I think it will win both. I think it will win both because I think on Broadway right now, it is the strongest book and the strongest score together. I think there are stronger scores on Broadway and I think there are stronger books on Broadway, but I think some like it hot does the best with them together and I think like they're they're nominated separately but I feel like they are generally awarded together. In terms of direction and choreography, Casey Nicola is back on Broadway and my god the man does not miss. Phenomenal choreographer, very good director. The show feels tight and there are other shows on Broadway that are trying to do what this show is doing and they do it worse because I think Casey Nicola is a better director and really understands what he wants to get from a story. So I think it will win both of those. And I think that's like not a bad thing. For best performance by featured actor, Kevin DeGuilla, um, love him. Absolute bright ray of sunshine in this show particular, like really stands out among a very good cast. Ordinarily, I'd say like Kevin all the way, that being said, there's a lot in this category. Like, I personally would like to see it go to Justin Cooley from Kimberly Akimbo, and I think it will go to um, either Justin or Alex from Shucked, because I've heard just stupid good things about their work. So I love Kevin. I want him to win a Tony. 
I don't know if I want him to win this Tony, but if he did, wouldn't be mad. Okay, I think it's all of them. Okay, and so <laughs> I hope that's 13. If not, I'm gonna insert here what I missed and what I think it's gonna be. Great, classic, how could you forget? I think it's gonna win Best Musical. Of all the shows that have opened this year, there have been so many great shows. I think this is the show that has the fewest weak spots. It's so fun, it's so funny, it's so beautiful. I think the show's gonna tour great. I think it's gonna run on Broadway for a really long time. Like, it checks as many boxes as you would need to check when you're picking like, what's the best musical of this season? Sound like it hot. <laughs> Shucked is a musical about corn. I guess you could also say that it's about family and community and love, and that it's a completely original musical in that it's not based on any book or movie or musical catalog, and instead just brings a breath of fresh air that is funny and light. It's filled with puns and some pretty good music, even if it is a bit country. And in general, I just think it's a really fun show. I, I'm glad it's finally made it to Broadway. I know it's been a long road to get here. It's got a stellar cast. It is just a, a good time. I'm glad it's finding success. I think it'll continue to find a lot of success after Broadway. And it says something that it's nominated for nine Tony Awards, including Best Musical, Best Book of a Musical for Robert Horn, Best Performer by an Actor in a Featured Role in a Musical for Kevin Cahoon, Best Performance by an Actor in a Featured Role in a Musical for Alex Newell. Best Original Score written for the theater for Brandy Clark and Shane McAnally. Best Scenic Design of a Musical for Scott Pask. Best Sound Design of a Musical for John Shivers. Best Direction of a Musical for Jack O'Brien. And Best Orchestrations by Jason Howland. I think the score and the book are both very good. I don't know if they'll win. I really like the soundtrack, one of my favorites of the year. The lyrics are very sharp. Some of the songs are very sweet, very even inspiring. I don't know that'll win. The book is funny and like might have the best dialogue, but book also is like dramatic arc and it doesn't have the best one of those. I don't think it'll win that either, but I think they're both good. I also don't know that it'll win any of the design categories, scenic, sound, and orchestrations. I thought the set looks nice from what I've seen of it. Hard to judge sound design and orchestrations from where I'm at. I wouldn't be upset if any of them won, but um, I'm not really counting on it. Similarly, I think Jack O'Brien's direction is pretty strong, but not super inventive. I don't know that he'll win anything for it. The show has two nominees in the Best Featured Actor categories, which means they can both win. Kevin Cahoon is hilarious as Peanut. He is very fun and has a great comedic role that I think it's cool that he's nominated, but he's not gonna win because really all eyes are on Alex Newell. I think they are my favorites to win Best Featured Actor. They give a performance that is funny and powerful and sweet, and I think they're a bit of a darling of the theater community anyway from some of their work in the TV and film and Broadway as well. So I think they will finally receive their Tony Award and we'll all be very excited for that. I don't think a show about corn is gonna win the best musical prize, but if it did, it'd be pretty funny. Let's talk about Kimberly Akimbo. Biggest off a play of the same name, this show had like an amazing sold out award winning run off Broadway and made the Broadway transfer late last year. The show is about Kimberly, a 16 year old girl who ages five times as fast as the rest of her peers. So she is played by a 70 year old actress kind of having to exist among a bunch of high schoolers, right? Set in the 1990s in a small town in New Jersey. As I'm sure you can guess, it is a show that will make you laugh as hijinks and hilarity. It will also make you like full body cry because that's like really sad. Kimberly Akimbo got eight nominations this year, including Best Orchestrations by John Clancy, Best Direction by Jessica Stone, uh, Best Book of a Musical by David Lindsay Allaire, uh, Best Original Score by Janine Tesori, uh, best Performance by an Actress in a Featured Role in a Musical for Bonnie Mulligan. Best Performance by an Actor in a Featured Role in a Musical for Justin Cooley. Best Performance by an Actress in a Leading Role in a Musical for Victoria Clark. And of course, Best Original Musical. Kimberly Akimbo is a very sweet show. It is a show with a lot of heart. That being said, 
I think there are things you can get away with in a play that you cannot get away with as much in a musical, and I think this show suffers from that a little bit. The show is at its strongest when it's two people interacting with each other, whether it's Kimberly and her dad, whether it's Kimberly and Seth, whether it's like the aunt and the dad, right? When it's one-on-one, -on -one, the show really sings. When it's one actor by themselves or when it's a large group of people, I think the show is slightly weaker. That being said, I am so happy all of these actors were nominated and if I had my way, they would all win. I think Victoria Clark can and should win as her performance as a 16 year old, as a 73 year old woman playing a 16 year old, absolutely stunning. And for Bonnie Mulligan, Bonnie Mulligan is a, a great performer who is very much in like the kookiest role in this show and sells it as authentic which is a very hard thing to do. She is funny, she is uh, evocative, without like detracting from what the story is. I really like Bonnie Mulligan. I think she is my pick to win. That being said, I have a sneaking suspicion it's gonna go to Betsy Wolf um, or Ruthie and Miles, which I would be fine with. They're both talented actors, but yeah. My heart lies with Bonnie Mulligan. And same with Justin Cooley. I want him to win. This is his Broadway debut. The kid's like 18, 19 years old. It's crazy. Like he's such a sweet, silly goofball who just brings a perfect amount of like resonance to the role of Seth. I think he does phenomenal work. That being said, I think it will probably go to one of the nominees from Shucked, which is not at all an upsetting thing. But if Justin Cooley did win, I would be thrilled. As for direction and orchestrations, I don't feel they were the strongest. I don't know. I or orchestrations, can I just say, is anyone's game. I don't know what I'm talking about. The orchestrations didn't blow me away. Do they ever? I don't know. Not my forte. And direction, this is tough. I feel like this director did a great job. I just don't, and I, and personally, I have no idea what she could have done better with this cast of characters telling this story in a very beautiful and authentic way. Um, that being said, I think that her work suffered a little bit at the hands of, of some of the dodgier parts of the script. And so for that reason, I don't think she'll win, but also we stand female directors on Broadway. So get it, Jessica Stone. As for book and score, the book I do not think will win because I think the book is the weak point of the show. The score, I love the score because I love Janine Tesori and it hits every like emotional chord that you want Janine Tesori to hit. My one like small tiny asterisk is that I didn't love the lyrics and there's not a lyricist credited. I don't know if that's Janine Tesori or if that's David Lindsay, um, but for whatever reason, the lyrics kind of took me out of it, which is so stupid, and maybe I'm being petty. If it was like purely music notes, I'd say give it score. But I think it's lyrics too, like wrapped up in that. And for that reason, I'd say maybe not. Am I a bad person? As for Best Original Musical, I love the show. I want the show to do good things. That being said, I don't think it will win this year which is sad because I think this show needs to win more than other shows like need to win. I think in a different year, this show would have absolutely dominated, but it's a good year and that's a good thing, but it sucks. It sucks for the, for the, the, the smaller, more intimate shows like Kimberly Akimbo, but it's a great show. If you get a chance, watch it with your eyes and your ears and your nose. I don't know what you're doing. New York, New York is a brand new Canada musical about Louisville, Kentucky. <laughs> to be perfectly honest, after a fair bit of research, I'm still not sure what New York, New York is really about. And from the sound of things, I'm afraid neither is its creative team. It's loosely based on the 1977 Scorsese film of the same title, in that it follows alcoholic jazz musician Jimmy Doyle and his on-again, off-again relationship with up-and-coming singer Francine Evans as they search out the great chord of music, money, and love. This show also weaves in the story of African-American trumpet player Jesse Webb, Cuban percussionist Mateo Diaz, and Polish? Eastern European violinist Alex Mann as they at least look, look for the first two things. I think a lot of people had pretty high hopes for this show, 
Despite having a relatively unknown cast, the creative team was stacked with legends. John Kender and Fred Ebb are staples in the Broadway canon. They brought in Lin-Manuel Miranda to provide additional lyrics, and it's directed and choreographed by Susan Stroman, who has her own mark on history. Nonetheless, when the show finally did open, reviews were not great. They said the scale was impressive, and there are a couple of really big numbers that are fun. The finale, New York, New York being one of them but the show was muddled, it tried to do too much, and didn't do any of it well, and no one really seemed to think it was very good. Nonetheless, it made it out with nine Tony nominations, including Best Musical, Best Book of a Musical for Sharon Washington and David Thompson, Best Performance by an Actor in a Leading Role in a Musical for Colton Ryan, yes. Best Scenic Design of a Musical for Beowulf Borat, Best Costume Design of a Musical by Donna Sakowska, Best Lighting Design of a Musical by Ken Billington, Best Sound Design of a Musical for Kai Harada, Best Choreography for Susan Stroman, and Best Orchestrations for Daryl Waters and Sam Davis. I'll be honest, I'm shocked that it was nominated for the creative awards it was. I cannot believe it was nominated for Best Book and it has no chance of winning. Choreography, maybe. People did like Susan Stroman's choreography. She's good at what she does. It is a dance show. I don't like it as much as some of the other shows this year, but I suppose it might have a chance. The design was very strong. The set was great. The lighting was great. The costumes were great. They were all really good. And again, if people had loved the show, I do think it might have swept all of those. But unfortunately, because they didn't think that the rest of it all worked together well enough, I kind of expect all the designers to be forgotten as well. The one exception might be orchestrations, the big band sound people like. I don't know how often a show only wins best orchestrations, but if that's a thing, maybe? I have to shout out my man Colton Ryan. I love this kid and I am so tickled that he was nominated. I, I can't believe it, I'm very excited. You know we're like mad that Leo DiCaprio won the Oscar for The Revenant and Stephanie J. Block won her Tony for Cher? Similarly, I will be so mad if Colton Ryan wins his Tony for this show. I'm a little mad he got his first nomination for this show. He's a talented man, he's gonna do great things, but this isn't it. As for Best Musical, it will not win, and that's fine. <laughs>